Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. In this video, we're going to continue off of the previous videos on classes in Python. And we're going to build an entire program that combines all the skills that you have learned over the past few videos. So the objective of this video is to make a quick uh, pet program. And for this, what we're going to do is we'll set up a menu. We'll set up a complete pet class. We'll allow you to create your own pet and uh, set up some variables for that pet so that they can be affected. Almost like uh, the old school uh, Tamagotchi, Tamaguchi, however you say it. I don't know if you ever had one, but uh, they were these annoying little pets of the 90s. I think they actually made a comeback recently, but uh, I had one as a kid, and it was this annoying little thing that you had to keep on feeding and keep it alive. I never kept mine alive. They kept on dying on me. I don't know. I guess you have to feed pets. I'm not sure. In any case, we're going to make a program that essentially is a miniature Tamaguchi, Tamagotchi game. I don't know how to say this. I probably should have looked it up before this. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll set up a couple of different things. We only need to import one library for this to work, and then we can set up our pet class. So I'm going to do from random, import rand range. And the reason I did that is instead of doing, say, from or import random, is that we'll import everything in the library, and we don't need everything in random. We just need random range. So it's just saying it's not used, but we'll use it in a second. I'm going to make that a little bigger so you can see it. Okay, so we're going to use ran range, and the benefit is that if we just do from random import ran range, we don't need to do random dot ran range. We can just use ran range. So it saves you a couple of keystrokes. Okay, so let's set up our class pet. Pass it an object, and then actually I need to give it a go. And then inside that we'll mark it as a triple string, as a uh, a virtual pet. We'll set up a couple of variables for this pet. Uh, we'll have excitement, hunger. I will essentially use food as hunger. And then we'll set up a vocabulary. We'll have set up a, like a series of things it can say um, back to us. So let's set up excitement, reduce, set it at three. Excitement max equals 10, excitement Warning equals three, food reduce equals two, food max equals 10, and food warning equals three. Now, I'm setting up warnings for this. Excitement would be like when we play with the pet, it gets excited and happy. And we can have it report back to us that it's happy. We also see food uh, reduce, so basically how full are they? And then food warning. I didn't set up anything that happens if like they, they dip below this or like get to like zero. You could say like your pet has left you or like your pet has died if you don't feed it. But uh, just to keep things positive, I didn't, I didn't include that in here. Uh, the other thing we can do, we can do vocab. And this is where you can set up the vocabulary. Now, by the way, for this, you can set up whatever variables you want. If you want to, um, you know, really expand the capabilities. I just did these as like a way just to show you how we could set it up and how we would use it with classes. But uh, yeah, you, I mean, you could do uh, pet age, maybe you adopt a pet. Um, we're going to do pet name in, in, a, uh, in the constructor function. So these are just the things that every pet's going to have as defaults. We don't have to set those in the constructor function. They're just going to inherit that from the parent. For the vocabulary, these are the things that you want to say. We want to start off with at least one thing because of how I'm going to show you how we're going to access this later on. So I'm going to set up like a growl. Grr. There we go. And make sure that if you, I'm going to, I want it to look like a quote when it says it back to us, like it's saying grr. So I put single quotes on the outside and then double quotes on the inside. Okay, let's set up our constructor function. Double underscore in it. Double underscore. Self, name, animal type. So we'll pass in name and animal type for the user when we when we create a copy of the pet, we'll be able to enter those things in. We'll set up self.name equals name, self.animal type equals animal type. These are not private. Um, you can access these outside of this class itself, which is fine. You should be able to find out its name or its animal type. Self.food 
is basically how full its belly is. So let's do rand range. And here we used rand range that we imported above. And we'll pass in uh, self.food max. And basically when the animal is, or the pet gets created, it's gonna pick a number between zero and our food max, which is 10 and set food to be that. So you could you could have a pet that needs to be feed, um, fed right away, or you could have a, a pet that is uh, already full. So we'll let uh, luck decide which one you get. Self.excitement, and we'll do the same thing for excitement, rand range, self.excitement max. Same thing, we'll have a pet that's created that it'll be either happy or um need attention so we'll, we'll let luck decide on that one too the last thing we need to do is for the vocabulary is set up self dot vocab and then i put in a uh, brackets there and i put in a semicolon where is it here nope oh my goodness there it is i, I should be not a semicolon a colon and what is this saying so we set up a vo a vocabulary uh variable for or uh, attribute for each constructed pet. So each new pet's going to get a vocabulary. And we're going back and getting the initial vocabulary with self.vocab. Um, and the reason we're doing this is we want to be able to add this to it. So everything's going to start off with this default. And because it's a list right here, we're essentially going to be adding on the existing list that's there. Um, this is how you would do it. So it's going to take this list and you could add more things to this list. Um, I, you could add as many things as you want to this list and just, um, it's just going to add it as a result at the end. What is that saying? It's saying end of line while scanning string. Wait a minute. That's, uh, oh, I have too many things here. There we go. Okay. So yeah, so we could have a couple of things that it says already, and then we're just going to add to it, uh, as we go through the program. So we don't want to be able to change the vocab for every pet. We're just going to change it for this pet. Okay, so that's it for our constructor function. Uh, we have everything here that is good to go. All right. So the next thing is let's move on to the, let's define a function. It's private one. Clock tick self. And this will pass time so that we can decrease their excitement and uh, their fullness over time. And we'll do this that. We'll go to self.excitement. And uh, let's see, minus equals one. Self.food minus equals one. And then we have a property. And this app property will be define mood self. And this is where we'll set up the. Uh, mood property and we want to be able to just access the stuff inside so we could do self.food is greater than self.food warning and actually we don't need parentheses here self if self.food is greater than self.food warning that's right so if, the, if they're not hungry and self.excitement is greater than self dot excitement warning return happy. So we can say the conditions. So if they're not hungry and they're not bored, they're happy. Uh, we could set up L if self dot food is less than if their their current you know, fullness of their belly, if it's less than self dot food warning. Then we want to return hungry. And if it's neither of those things, they're just going to be bored. Return bored. Okay. So yeah, if self.food, if self.food, yeah, okay. So we have if they're ha happy, hungry, and then bored as the last case. The other thing we can do is we can say, uh, let's see. We could set up our string. So if we do, if we print out a pet, we can say what it is, str. We did that, we practiced that in an earlier video. And for this, we could just say, um, 
return. Uh, maybe something like a new line. I'm, and then we can give it a self dot name plus period plus quotes, new line. I feel, uh, we can do self dot mood plus a period. So self.mood will be returned as a string, so that will be fine. Everything here will be fine. I'm space, make sure my spaces look okay. All right, that looks good. So that handles if we print out, uh, print the object, it will print out this string statement. Next up, we got define, let's teach. And we'll pass in two parameters, self as always, and word. This is the word we want to teach the pet. We can do self or the sound or whatever you want to teach it. Self dot vocab. And we'll use append. That's how we add things to the list. So we'll use append and we'll append the word to that list. And here is we'll, we'll we will reduce their uh, their fullness and their excitement because we'll have a cost, right? So it's part of this is like kind of a game. So you have a cost of doing certain things like uh, teaching or playing. Some of these are going to have an impact on the hunger and excitement. And you could have all sorts of different properties. You could increase or decrease depending on your interactions with the pet, but we'll just keep it simple at hunger and excitement. So what we'll do is we'll uh, clock tick. And this will be the method that we run up here. And this will decrease excitement and food by one. So we have to add the, the quotes there, uh, the parentheses there. Let's go down here to define talk self. And if we just say pet talk, we could do print and we can print off some stuff here. Uh, I am a, and then we can say, I'll add a, I'll, add, I'll do a multi-line here. So I'm gonna add a comma at the end. You could do this as pluses, but. I'll just do commas, I guess, could be easier to see. Uh, print I'm a, and then we could do self. I'm gonna make sure it's indented. And actually, I'm gonna bring this down. Sorry, low formatting thing here. I'm gonna bring print I am a down to the next line. There we go. I want this to be formatted nicely here. I'm a, uh, and then we can say what it is. We can say self dot animal type, comma, uh, self. Uh, we say animal type. I am a dog. Say I'm a. I say well, I did a dog. I'm an animal type. Uh, named. Comma, and then we could do self dot. Uh, name. And then we'll also do a period. Comma. I feel, and then we space, comma, self.mood. We have mood as, we had it as a method, so we have to add that there. And I feel uh, mood. And then say, I feel mood space now, period. And we can do a new line after that. So you can play around with this to see what you want to say. It doesn't really matter what they what they say when they talk. They basically should report us some stuff about them and how they feel. Uh, you could name it define report, but that'd be kind of weird to command to an animal, but your call. So we have a talk. Oh, we have to actually, as part of talk, we're not only going to just print that statement out, but we're going to cost them some time. So let's do self dot on double underscore clock tick. Cost them some time. Let's uh, go to our next function, which is define feed self print. I'm going to put uh, a little asterisk here to indicate a crunch. And we can do a new line and says, hmm, say thank you. There we go. And then we can do a meal, a new variable called meal is going to equal rand range self.food. So we'll give them the current food value. If they have say four foods, they're hungry, you know, their, their, their fullness is at say four out of 10. 
we can do a random range between their current food uh, state and their current food vari uh, variable value and the max. So we will never give them like, you know, it could fill them up or, you know, depending on the meal, we could add a little bit of variety in there. Self dot food uh, full. What was it? Uh, what did I say for variable up here? Uh, food max. Self dot food max. Okay, self dot food and self dot food. Why is this underlined here? Is assigned but never used. We're going to use it in a second. This thing is so impatient. Self dot food plus equals meal. So we add meal to the existing food variable. First, we get its range between its like the current value and uh, the full max value, and then we add that to meal. And then we can handle what happens if you go too low or over. We can say, um, yeah, we can say self dot food is less than zero. So if, even if they fed them in, it's still less than zero. Uh, we can do, we could just set it to be zero because it doesn't make sense to have negative food. Uh, you can't have less than zero food in your belly. Self dot food is equal to zero. And we can say print, I am hungry. I'm still hungry because there we go. And then we can handle L if self dot food is greater than self dot food max. Self dot food is going to equal self dot food max. So if it goes above 10, just set it back to 10. And why don't we just say 10 here? Well, we set the variables at the top and that's the benefit of setting them at the top is that if we want to tinker with these values, we don't have to go hunting through the code to find the one place we put 10 that is throwing up the code. We just use these as a substitute for these values and then we can tinker with them as we play our game. Self.food max, let's go back down and let's say uh, print, I'm full. And then let's take away some time. Self dot clock tick. Let's set up our next very uh, next uh, method here, and we'll do play self. And we could do print. Woohoo! You can have it say anything you want. We could set a fun variable is equal rand range. We can use the same logic we did for above with our meal here, uh, where we just use uh, rand range self dot excitement self dot excitement max we'll get a variable between a value between those two endpoints and make it equal to fun and then we can say uh fun no uh excitement is going no self dot excitement whoops self dot excitement is going to be equal to a plus equal fun and then we can handle if self dot excitement is less than zero. Self dot excitement is equal to zero. And we can say uh, print I am bored. Bored. There we go. And we could do elif. Elif self dot excitement. Excitement is above or um no if it's, out, if it's out of excitement is yeah um greater than sorry greater than self dot excitement max then we could say self dot excitement is equal to self dot excitement max and we can print i am happy or excited, whatever you like. And then we can take away some time here as a result, self dot clock tick. Okay, that's it. That handles our pet class. We handled a bunch of different things it can do already. So let's go down and let's set up the main program where we can ask some questions. I'll go back to the main program, make sure there's no, I have like these little bars here, make sure there's no bars, make sure you're right. Uh, there's no white space before that. And we'll define a function called main. This is not in the class. This is outside of the class. The class is defined by these bars. And you can always check by here in this editor, we can go to the little top and we can hit that little minus sign there. 
And if everything gets compacted into the class object, you know you did it right. Uh, each of the functions, you can always check the functions by hitting that minus sign and checking to see if everything is right where it needs to be and you don't have accidental indents here or there. Let's set up a pet name. And let's input, what do you want to name your pet? Pet type equals input. What type of animal is your pet? And then we can do pet equals capital pet, uh, parentheses, pet underscore name, comma, pet underscore type. So here is where we create our new pet. Let me get a little comment here. Create a new pet. And we are using the lowercase version of the pet. Okay, this is probably not the, we could actually probably do, um, we could do like my pet. I don't, I don't want to, so we, we would call this, um, when we, when I use that variable pet there, we would call this variable shadowing, meaning that we have something in the main program called pet here with capital P and I was going to create a lowercase version of it, but it just, um, I don't, I don't want to get confused. So, uh, pet type, we get the input from these two values. We pass it in to create a new pet. These get put into the constructor function right up here at the top, where to go, right here, name and animal type. And then the whole program goes from there. So now that we have my pet, uh, let's do input. Hello, I am, and then we can pass in the pet name plus, uh, actually I'll, I'll spread this over a couple of lines here so you can see it. I am pet name. This should be back in line. There we go. And then we can do pet name. Uh, let's see what else we got. Pet name. You can say, and I am new here. And then I'll do a another plus. Whoops. Not build class. Plus. I'll do a new line. Press. Actually, I'll get rid of that space. Press. Enter to start. And the reason is that we're going to be undefined name pet. Pet dot name. Undefined name. Oh, uh, sorry. My we changed it to find pet. There we go. My pet dot name. So this is the new this is the new pet we're creating. So we go to that new pet and we get its name. Okay, and after the input, let's do choice equals none capital N. And while Choice does not equal zero. We can run our main program. So this is a really easy way to just run a main program in a loop. And so we can do print. Um, and we'll do for this print statement here. Whoops. We'll do a triple string. So this would be kind of a long one. Let's do, uh, I'm going to put a fancy title on here. Interact with your pet. And in between those triple strings, I'm going to add a couple of lines here for options. Let's add in what they can do. So we'll do one, feed your pet. Oops, what did I do that? Feed your pet. There we go. Two, talk with your pet. That's going to annoy me because it keeps on trying to autocomplete pet name. There we go. Three, teach your pet a new word. Four, Play with your pet. Play with your print. Does it make sense? Zero, quit. And that's it. I'm going to get rid of some of these empty lines here. And that will be our print statement. And then after that, let's handle what happens if they are, um, what their choice is. So make sure that your indents are good. Make sure you're in the while loop. If choice equals zero print goodbye elif choice equals one we simply just got to do pet oh, my pet uh, dot feed that's it 
Oh, my underscore pet. My underscore pet dot feed. Elif choice equals two. My pet dot uh, talk. Elif choice equals, oh, I got to put these in quotes. Remember, put these in quotes, these numbers in quotes. Otherwise, it will throw an error. Uh, Python does not convert for you. So if you put in string two, it's not number two. So yeah, just make sure that that is uh, right. Okay, next up, let's do three. If choice is three, we have teacher pet, my pet dot teach. And then uh, let's see, my pet dot teach. Uh, oh, we have to take an input here. Uh, new word equals uh, input. What do you want to teach your pet to say? And we can take that and put that in new word here for the teacher that will add it to the dictionary. Elif choice equals four. We have play with your pet. My pet dot play. Okay, and then we can handle what happens if they type in like nine or something else. Uh, we'll print. Sorry, that isn't a valid option. And then to kick things off, all we got to do is go into the main program and type main. This will run the main function. And that's it. Let's give this a test run and see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to pull this up here. What do you want to name your pet? Scout. Uh, it's going to be a dog. Hello, I'm Scout. I'm new here. Press enter to start. Uh, that's why we did that. So this little line can print off here and enter to start will kick off this choice. Oh boy, what did I do? Oh no, we have an error here. We gotta stop this. Oh boy. All right, what happened here? Uh, if choice equals zero, none. Do I have everything lined up here? Um... Yep, I do. Uh, while choice does not equal zero, print if choice, print main. Uh, what did I do? All right, there's a little auto format button there. Auto format, see if that fixes it. Let's take a look. Oh, I know what it did here. So we set up choice to be none. And then while choice is not equal zero, we actually forgot to, to take an input for choice. So I'm going to go right below the print statement here, while choice, and uh, we need to go in there and add in an option. So, so we can actually go and use this. So let's go to print here and input uh, choice equals input. And we'll say choice. There we go. Now, why is this all... I'll print choice. That should not be indented. None of this should be indented. I take this all back. One tab. You can you can move everything left and right with tab. I mean, move everything to the right with tab, but you can also highlight everything and do shift tab instead of having to go through each line. Now let's try. What do you want to name your pet? Scout, dog. Press enter to start. Good, that's better. Uh, okay, interact with your pet. Uh, feed your pet. Let's give it a choice one. And no attribute, full max. Uh, what I do? Self dot excitement, self dot. Oh, uh, there's no. Let's see. Food, food max. What did I type? Full. Uh, let's see. Line one o uh, fifty one. Self dot food, food max. There it is. That was my bad. Run it again. Go dog. Just start. Let's feed the pet. I'm full. Mm, crunch. All right. That's good. 
Uh, let's do, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see. Let's try two. Talk with your pet. Uh, string object is not callable. Uh, let's go to line 45. And where did I goof? Hmm. Oh, apparently on line 69 and 70, I, or line 60, or 70 apparently, excite, excitement. Did I mess up on the other one? Ex, I did on 65 too. Excitement. Typos. All right, well, that handles that. I wonder if, no, that couldn't be it. Uh, let's go up and I'm going to clear this input. And we did talk, right? So let's take a look at talk. Uh, Scout, dog, and talk is, start, talk's number two. All right, so we're still getting the same thing. String object not callable. I wonder if it's not liking mood here. Not callable. Um, let's do, oh, that should run. String object not callable. I wonder if it's that part. I'm going to temporarily cut this out. I want to see if it runs now. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Two. Yeah, it just didn't like us using um, mood as a um, a variable there. That's kind of annoying. All right, we're going to quickly fix this by going in. I am self animal name, self type, self dot mood. I'm going to go into the talk function. I'm going to set up a local variable called uh, state equals self dot mood. And actually, you know what? I think the problem is, never mind. We don't actually need to do that. I think the problem is that we set this initially as a property and I was going to have it, I was going to have it do something else, I think. And then we can just get rid of actually that being a property and that, that should fix it. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Press enter to start to do this run. Yep. There it goes. Okay. So yeah, we just had to get rid of the property above define mood and I am, yep. I feel happy now. There we go. And we see that everything is working fine. Let's do new word. What do you teach your pet to say? Um, there we go. And we can say for talk with your pet. Let's see if it does say something here. I feel, oh, uh, all right. Last thing. I actually forgot about that. Uh, talk self mood. And we didn't actually have it say anything off our list, did we? Um, no, we did not actually. So let's, let's do that right now real quick. All right. So I'm back and talk and right after define self talk, let's do right before our tick, let's do another print statement here and let's do uh, self dot vocab brackets, rand range parentheses, L E N for the length. And we want to get the length of self.vocab. So it's going to get a random object off the length of the self vocab list. So that will go in there and actually be able to report back to us. Let's try this one more time. Here we go. And let's teach our pet. What do you want to teach your pet to say? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, let's talk with our pet too. And uh, I am blah, 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 named blah, blah, blah. I feel bored now. Uh-oh, we got to give him, give him some excitement. And uh, grr. So we can do it again. Talk with your pet. And it says hi. Very good. So it's going off there. And hopefully maybe we could try it one more time and see if we can get the new word to come out. There it goes. So now it knows a new word that we've uh, now taught it. So there we are. We have uh, basically everything here working okay. Let's check uh, four. And woohoo, I am bored. <laughs> Let's try four again. Um, still bored. Woohoo, there we go. All right. So actually, we didn't actually have it say anything if it is. Uh, no, we did. I'm happy. Um, oh, it's it's in the it's in between. Um, I am really happy. <laughs> so we didn't actually have it say anything if it's like in between bored and really happy. So you could, uh, but that's why it's not reporting on anything.
And oh no, we have a bug here. Empty range for Rand range uh, up to that. Um, empty range for Rand range, uh, line 226, line 65. Let's see. Find self excitement, self excitement dot range, Rand range. Yeah. Includes the endpoint. Self excitement dot max. Hmm. I wonder if we just do self excitement is greater than or equal to. I'll do on the food too as well. If greater than or equal to, yeah, because what it's saying is that we're running out of. We're basically it's ten out of ten, so there's no range. So let's see what happens again. And press enter to start. Let's uh, let's feed the pet. Uh, we should have done actually. We'll do play with pet. That was the that was the bug we encountered. Really, I'm really happy for. Ah, did it again. Empty range for random range. Greater than or equal to. All right, all it says do it up here, 65. Yeah, so it's trying to go to this range and not getting it. So for, uh, random range, we could just do uh, zero for that as well for the self.food. We won't get the current food. We'll just we'll increase it from zero. Let's try one more time. Play with your pet for. Really happy for. Really happy for. There it goes. Okay. All right, so that we fixed that. No more bugs. Everything is looking good. This is it. This is the the last of the uh, pet dog classes, class tutorials. We combined everything we've known how to do so far to create a really cool Tamagotchi uh, little clone. And uh, you feel free to add in any other functions. I, in fact, I would challenge you to add in other functions and other things that your pet can do and uh, try making this a little more interesting and personal to you. That's it for this video, and we'll see you in the next one.